Hello everybody and welcome back to the Dragon's Library. Today we are going to be talking about The Cloisters, a new book by Katie Hayes. So The Cloisters is a bit of an interesting book for me and we're going to go over that in a second. First up though, uh, I do want to make an apology for this coming out late. It's likely going to be coming out on Wednesday um, and I'm going to get the next one out for Thursday or Friday so I can make sure I have something out for Saturday and Sunday. I've fallen a bit behind again. Life is just chaotic like that, and this isn't really a full-time job for me, so what are you going to do? <laughs> anyway, moving on from there, let's talk about the book. So, this is a supernatural mystery story by Katie Hayes. It's actually her first book, from what I can tell, so definitely makes a strong impression um, for her writing style and her future career. So, I'm very interested to see what she does next. Interesting story. First up, we have Anne Stillweather as our main character. She comes to New York, expecting to spend her summer working as a curatorial associate for the Metropolitan Museum of Art, or the Met. Instead, she finds herself assigned to the Cloisters, a gothic museum and garden renowned for its medieval art collection. The group at that uh, Cloisters, including the gardener, the head, and another associate who is helping out for the summer, are currently researching tarot and its involvement in Renaissance and practically earlier eras of history, with some supernatural elements that seem to imply that certain tarot decks might actually be able to tell the future. So there's a light supernatural brush to this story. However, as this story and as the summer progresses, strange events, mysteries, different relationships between her three associates, and this overwhelming sense of dread threatened to tear them apart until a horrible potential accident reveals the darker secrets hidden underneath. The whole thing is this slow rolling tragedy, in the sense that you already know things are going to go horrible from day one. The book literally starts with, would I have still gone if I would known there was going to be the body, and I still would have. Basically, you get from the get-go that someone gets murdered. Um, and you spend the first half really wondering who it's going to be, what's going on, who you can trust, who Anne can trust. And it's interesting. So let's get into my first impressions. And my first impression on this is just, it's well-written, but a bit slow. This is, I said it's a supernatural mystery. And when I say supernatural mystery, think heavy on the mystery really, really, really light in the supernatural elements. The supernatural elements are like a light dusting, a sprinkle on top of the chocolate ice cream here. And that chocolate ice cream is the mystery. The mystery is well done. The relationship between the three main characters and a tight main cast of Anne as the, secondary, as the primary character, your protagonist, and the three secondary characters that act as the core, along with a handful of tertiary characters, keep this group of suspects and people you can, you know, have to keep track of very small, which means that this is a mystery that with a lot of moving parts, but only a few key moving parts. And you're able to very much puzzle it out on your own. I was able to figure out, to a degree, the twist before, I, before the big reveals and before the main character starts figuring things out either. I'd say the first half of this is heavy buildup. The next, like, fourth is the climax to an extent, and also, like, the plot really, really getting started. And then you have the rolling fallout of it all in the last quarter, which was way more engaging than it had any right to be. Katie Hayes has this very good style. Um, it's not my personal favorite, but it is very distinctive. She has a good internal monologue with Anne Stillweather. She comes across... She, her writing comes across as, like, Anne being very depressed, but also driven which is this nice balance in the way she describes herself in the book. And I just thought it was very well written. I thought it was very well paced. I liked Anne as a character. She was resourceful. And she was quick enough to figure things out, but she didn't make any magical leaps in logic a lot of time. And she was just suspicious enough of the tarot cards that I found the light supernatural elements very believable in the way they were presented. Especially in the way that they're just so light. Like, if you really squinted, you might even be able to say there's nothing supernatural going on here at all. This is all just coincidences. Like, it's that kind of light supernatural. The kind of magic that you could definitely see escaping uh, people's notice. 
In addition, I found a lot of the character drama very interesting. I'm going to make a mild spoiler here, but it was kind of the moment where this book clicked for me. And basically, you have one of the gardeners, the gardener, the, he's one of the main three other characters. His name is Leo. And he's been sort of like a side character. Him and Anne have been like making flirtatious things at each other occasionally. And she's going on this walk in the park and she sees him at like this like, you know, big old uh, kind of like general gathering of shopkeepers, like a sort of market. And he's selling homegrown herbal narcotics and aphrodisiacs that he's cultivated in the gardens. Uh, and it's just as though we're like, wait, is he like a all-natural drug dealer? <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay, you know what? I was getting a little bored with the art history stuff. Like, I like that stuff occasionally, but I don't want it as, like, the main core of my book. But suddenly having the gardener being a drug dealer makes this a great deal more interesting. And I suddenly want to know a lot more about these uh, different herbs you're growing. <laughs> oh, it sounds so dumb when I say it out loud. But it was genuinely interesting, and I think it, it was this moment where the book surprised me. It threw a curveball at me that I didn't expect and got my attention really hooked. Um, I wouldn't say it's the most engaging thing I've read this year. I wouldn't say it's the best thing I've read this year. But I will say it's definitely a good book. And if you like mysteries, I think this has a lot of the good elements that a lot of mystery books fail to have. You have characters logically figuring things out. There's a clear cause and effect for things. There's time for both you and the character to build your own assumptions, build your own theories to what's going on. There's plausible reasons why multiple different characters could be responsible for the thing. You don't know who the thing, the murder, is going to happen to. It's just a very well put together, well thought out mystery that feels like they really thought about how everything was going to play out. And I truly do enjoy it as a mystery story. I think it is a very good example of this. Now, I will admit that this book is very slow paced. And I'm not against slow paced books. I raved and ranted about Babel the other day. The thing is... Babel had this, and I'm using it as an example because Babel is a good example of another uh, slow-paced book this year. It's really unfair to compare this to Babel because that's just so well-researched, so well-made. But Babel had this intense payoff in the second half. Like, when it's, and I'm just going to say, when it's murder happens, which kind of would get the plot into, like, really high gear, it goes ham afterwards. Like, things collapse. I didn't really feel a collapse happen in the Cloisters. It was more like this dull horror as they try to figure out what they're going to do now. And it didn't really feel like a, a climax moment. It more of like an implosion. The ending of the story really had the characters coming to grips with everything that happened. And it's very, very somber. Like... You feel like every character almost came right away from here worse. Even the protagonist, to a certain extent, has lost so much. Even though she's gained everything she wanted, she lost something she didn't even realize she had on the way. And it's all I'm going to spoil there. It's the most I'm going to go. Because I do think this is a mystery story. It's good. You should definitely go into this blind. You should really go for it. Uh, in addition, I like the setting. The Cloisters Gala. I didn't even know about the Cloisters until... I had read this book, but it is a real place, and I might be using some images from it in the um, video if I can get a hold of some stuff, maybe even some video footage if I can get some, like, tour footage, because that'd be great. I, it's, it's really hard to find video footage for books. I end up using a lot of stock footage, uh, so it's really nice if I can find anything like that. I hope I can find some stuff for this. However, I just am just so impressed with this book. I, it was better than I thought it was. I thought it was going to be, like, a you know, 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10 average. I'm going to give this like a 7 in the end. It's about what I thought, but it was more gripping than I thought. And I, I will admit, I was not sure I was going to finish this book. The part of the reason this review took so long is I kept delaying this. I listened to like the first few chapters and it didn't immediately grip me. And I was like, no, no, no. Davis, you promised yourself you're going to read this. So I listened to the whole thing and I feel better off for having done that. And slow-based books can be like this sometimes. Sometimes it feels like the book is just like, get to the point. 
But there's a reason for the tension building in this one, I feel. There's a reason they're setting all these big plot points up. It's a mystery story. they got to set up all the subtle clues for the detail-oriented readers to pick up on. And I think this book does a good job at that. So, in conclusion, The Cloisters is a great first impression by Katie Hayes. It's not an amazing book of the year or anything like that. It's definitely not for everyone. But if you like mystery stories, if you like maybe art history... Uh, if you like supernatural elements that are so light that they might not be real, and it makes even the characters question, wait, was that actually supernatural or was it just coincidence? This might actually be the book for you. All in all, I'd give this a 7 out of 10. But I would recommend that everyone who gives this a shot read at least to the halfway point. Or at least to the murder. I think if you do that, you will find the book is able to grip you and keep you coming back in a way that some of the better mystery stories out there are able to do once they get your hooks into you. With all that out of the way, though, uh, let's move on to our announcement. Since I'm not going to do a spoiler talk for this, it's a mystery story. Go check out the mystery for yourself. Anyway, sorry about everything lately. Things have been chaotic. Uh, not like life ways, but I'm still... I thought I was over the cough, and then it just came back the other day. Uh, I've actually been coughing most of the day today. So, <laughs> joy! It's made things hard to do. Uh, I was able to get to my stream. Uh, I hopefully, I'm, hopefully, I'm going to be able to get to that stream without coughing myself to death. But I have cough drops available for that and some tea. So hopefully, I'll be fine. In addition, I am going to hopefully be getting a review for eighteen ninety nine. It's this new supernatural drama mystery thing on Netflix that I'm interested in. It's by the creators of The Dark, which that was a pretty good show for the first few seasons. The last season was meh, but that's my personal opinion. Anyway, aside from that, uh, I will be trying to get a playthrough. I will try to finish a playthrough of Pokemon Violet, uh, which is the Pokemon game I'm reviewing. I know it's everybody says it's trash, but I like to judge things for myself. I'm going to try and get through that sometime. Hopefully I'll be able to get through most of it. By the weekend, I don't think I will, so I'll probably have to have something else lined up for that. Worst case scenario, I go see that dumb new uh, Die Hard Christmas movie and make fun of it and make it cry. Uh, I also really want to play the Callisto Protocol, so I will likely not be streaming that, unfortunately, because I want to rip through that game in order to get the review out before the end of December. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. See you guys next time. Bye. Hope you enjoyed the video. On your screen, you should be seeing a link to my channel. If you go there and subscribe, that'd be great. In addition, you'll be seeing two other links. One's to my Season 2 playlist. That's all the videos from 2022. In addition, below that, you should be seeing a link to a video that YouTube apparently recommends you click on. So, you know, why not click on it? See one of my other videos. Maybe you'll like it. Maybe it'll have something else you'll enjoy. Uh, maybe YouTube doesn't know shit. We'll find out together.